Power Stack Part 2. G'day brothers, welcome back to the bench and uh, today we're going to be continuing with our battery bandwagon tour. This is uh, the DeWalt Power Stack Part 2 Electric Boogaloo. Now in the last episode we did find out all sorts of cool stuff about the power stack here compared to this uh, 2 amp hour 18650 based battery, namely around the runtime, the charging behaviour, the heat capacity or the heat dissipation, uh, yeah all sorts of good stuff so go check that out, um, I guess I'll just wait here. And uh, so in those tests, it was a lot of interesting stuff, but it didn't really test the power of the thing. And you know, everyone loves power. Everyone wants more power. We're all bloody Captain Kirk up here. So uh, anyway, today I thought I'd try and push these uh, little batteries a little bit harder and we'll try and do some bigger drills and uh, yeah, really see if the power stack does actually give more power or if, you know, they just have better heat capacity or whatever. So joining us today, we've got the Killer B, the DCH172 as well as the DCH263, the big banana. And I chose these two because that's the smallest one I got and that's the biggest one I got. So, you know, should give us a good idea of the range. Also, this bastard just looks stupid with this tiny battery on there. So the first test is a standard uh, speed drill test, just drilling into these concrete bricks we've got and uh, we're using the 16 millimeter bit because that is the maximum capacity of the killer bee here. So averaging out a few of those runs, we basically ended up with no difference. It was a, an average of 11.16 seconds uh, for the standard and 11.52 uh, for the power stack. So tiny little bit slower for the power stack, but ah, whatever. So next we got same drill, the same drill bit, because that's you know still a pretty big drill bit, and uh, seeing how the big banana handles it. All right, now we're seeing something. Okay, that's interesting. So the bigger tool with the bigger motor, presumably bigger power requirements, uh, had a big difference. So that was 10.64 averaging out for the, uh, the the XR standard battery there. And then the power stack had 8.71. So that's actually, you know, looking like the little power stack is is doing its thing. It's delivering more power. So we did, we did get a bit of a difference uh, with the bigger drill, but still didn't really see any major difference there. So... <laughs> Uh, for the next test, I decided to do a long drill. So this is a 14 millimeter diameter. So we're going to be drilling about 200 mil deep with this guy. And uh, in inches, that's about four. And that's near the top of this uh, little drill's capacity here. So it should be a good challenge. Uh, and the workpiece is going to be a block of 55 megapascal concrete. So uh, your standard concrete is about 20 MPA. So this is like two and a half times tougher than that. So hopefully we'll see a bit of a difference there. So if we average up a bunch of those runs, we end up with uh, an average of 51.62 seconds for the standard uh, 18650 cell battery and an average of 53.65 seconds for the power stack. So there you go, a little bit slower again. Interesting. And because we got a whole bunch of holes there, I was able to poke a rod in there and uh, actually measure how deep all these holes got. So with the, the standard battery, the XR battery, uh, we ended up with a depth of 72 centimeters. And with the power stack, we ended up with a depth of 69.5. So uh, still a little bit less, but uh, you know, this is a smaller capacity, so uh, not too bad there. Seems like it's punching above its weight slightly. And for the big banana, the heavy drilling was done with a 20 millimeter bit going in the same depth, about 200 mil. Let's see how they go.
and that was quite a difference. So the so she only actually got one full hole of this, so uh, we were unable to get an average. But for the one hole we could get, uh, the standard battery took 94.64 seconds. Oh God compared to a much more brisk 77 seconds for the power stack. So there you go. Uh, it really is looking like this thing does supply more power, especially if you've got a hungry tool. So uh, this one is so big, I can literally just stick my tape measure down the hole and measure up that depth. That ends up with uh, 33 linear centimeters versus 41. And for that test, uh, the power stack got through basically two and a bit holes. Whereas this one got through uh, one and a bit, basically. So the standard battery, she uh, she really struggled to provide enough power to this big tool. There was a, there was a complete failure to chooch after the first one hole, basically. It sort of couldn't really push it. Um, so that is really what we're talking about. It's looking like at least for the uh, the power hungry tools, the power stack really did uh, actually stack up there. All right, so to sum up what we've seen today, um, yeah, not that much uh, really with the Killer B here. Not a huge difference going on with these two batteries. So for the first drill test, we saw a slight decrease with the power stack, about 3% decrease in, in speed. And then the heavy drilling with the big drill bit, that was also a little bit slower, just under 4% slower average speed there. And for the heavy drill depth, the power stack also got a little bit less, 3.5% less. But don't forget, this is a smaller capacity. This is only 1.7 amp hours compared to the two amp hours for the standard battery. Now it doesn't say so on here, so do watch out if you're looking to buy one of these because they are only 1.7 amp hours. They're not proud of that tiny capacity, obviously, but you know, it's the first run of a product. That's all good. So this one is actually 15% smaller capacity than this one. So having 3% less work done is actually you know, punching above its weight. It's actually doing better than you'd expect. So yes, the power stack does actually have more power. It's about 10 or 12% more based on these tests. But with the big banana, this is a big power hungry tool and the little power stack really punched above its weight with this one. So for the standard drilling speed, uh, she actually got about 18% faster. For the heavy drilling, the big 20 mil bit, she also got about 18% faster. For the heavy drilling depth, she actually got 25% more drilling done. And if we normalize the performance per amp hour, so that means dividing the drill depth by two in this case and 1.7 in this case, we end up with a massive 46% difference per amp hour. So um, when it comes to a power hungry tool like this, it's really looking like the power stack is actually delivering the goods, which is ah, a bit of a shame because you know what? It's only 1.7 amp hours. You just wouldn't really use it with these big tools. Um, but that is uh, a really good finding. I'm super happy with that because it is proving that this thing is actually kind of living up to the hype, you know? And in the first episode, we saw that this one heated up very little compared to the standard battery. In fact, uh, this one rose by about 18 degrees. This one rose about 38 degrees Celsius, of course. I do not speak Fahrenheit. So that makes the power stack 52% cooler running in my hands as well. And you know, I was super happy with uh, how this turned out because uh, I was actually, you know, really surprised. These things don't usually work out this way. Usually the companies are a little bit exaggerating. Um, you know, this thing is meant to provide a lot more power. Well, the box says, what is the box? The box says 50% more power compared to this two amp hour battery. I don't know about 50%, not sure how they tested that. But, you know, there may be some way to check that out in future. Uh, let me know what you reckon. So the, uh, the yellow elephant in the room is obviously the size of this thing. Now, uh, the way this thing performs, I am pretty confident that once we get some proper sized ones of these, yes, it will cost a fortune. This little thing cost me 150 bucks Australian. Uh, so that is a lot. Uh, but it really does bring the goods. So once these guys start coming out in proper sizes, we will start seeing proper results with this. And DeWalt is already probably the strongest of the big four in their rotary hammer game. So that's gonna make a big difference to a lot of people out there in the field. And uh, you know, I was kind of intrigued about that. So how is this little thing, look how, how much smaller that is. How is this little thing actually performing so much better? You know, they have some 
uh, I don't know, magic electronics or something in there. Uh, well, after a quick visit to Battery University, it seems like it's mostly actually just the shape, the geometry of these things. So to explain, inside, inside your standard batteries are a bunch of 18650 cells, just like that, just like a giant double A. They all line up inside there. So if you have a few layers of, of electrodes in there, let's say there are four layers of electrodes inside there, you've got one wrapping around that's gonna be that big, but then the next one is gonna be a bit smaller. So you end up with a surface area that size with your outer layer, your next layer will be a little bit smaller, your next layer, you know, like a tree, like tree rings, you know, they get smaller towards the middle. Uh, and then your, your fourth one on the inside will be the smallest one. But with power cell batteries, they kind of come in whatever shape you want, whatever size you want. They don't really have standard cell sizes like these guys do. So say our pouch cell is that big. If you have four layers of them, and basically that allows you with the pouch cell style batteries to have a lot more surface area for the electrons to flow through. So that does two things for you. That gives you more surface area for the electrons to flow uh, when transmitting power, but it also means that there's gonna be less resistance in that conductor. So that means it's gonna heat up a lot less. So, you know, that's, that's probably the biggest part of it. There may be other magic source in here that they're doing as well, but that's already a really big advantage. And honestly, I'm surprised that the, the old pouch cells haven't really caught on sooner. Uh, they have achieved price parity by now, and that's probably why these things are coming out. Why they are so expensive though, uh, I do not know, because, uh, you know, according to some projections, they should cost the same or even a bit less by now. Another advantage of a pouch cell is that they can just stack up really nicely. Whereas if you've got a bunch of cylinders, uh, they've always got that space inside. There's always gonna be some void, no matter how you stack them. It's always gonna be taken up space, just dead space inside there. Whereas these guys, you just stack them up like a book and uh, oh, I don't have a book handy, but you know what books look like. And thanks to everyone who subscribed lately, of course. Uh, please do smash that subscribe button if you haven't already, because you know what? Those bloody ads you watch at the start of the video, I don't get a cut of the ad revenue until I get enough subscribers. So please do help us out, uh, you know, me and any other YouTuber you like too. That's the best way to do it. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching. That's about it from me and the gang today. And uh, I will scratch you guys later. Uh, let us know what you reckon in the comments. You know, subscribe, all that. Catch you next time.